All right. Hey guys, how you doing? So uh, welcome to chapter 11. Uh, in this chapter, we are going to look at sexual reproduction and the ins and outs of sexual reproduction. Um, and then also some of the reproductive strategies um, that are present there. Okay, so uh, let's jump into it. So um, chapter 11 is going to be broken up into three series. I'm going to give you, you guys an overview of what sexual reproduction is. And then we're going to go specifically into a particular process called meiosis. And then we're going to finish with reproductive strategies. Okay. Um, so uh, now sexual and asexual, let's compare the two. So you already looked at asexual. Uh, the production of new organisms uh, from one parent organism. Remember the key word there is that you've only got one parent. Um, offsprings are genetically identical to their parents. Uh, we refer to the daughter cells as clones because they have the same DNA or genetics. Uh, in prokaryotes, uh, that is binary fission. In eukaryotes, it involves a particular process called mitosis, which is what your cells and my cells do in order to reproduce and grow uh, repair, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Now, sexual reproduction uh, is the production of new organisms by the combining of genetic information from two individuals. Okay. So now you've got two parents that produce one offspring. Yeah. Uh, now that usually uh, occurs in animals when the male gamete or the sperm combines with the female gamete, which is the egg. Okay. Uh, what that means is uh, the offspring will gain half its DNA from one parent and then half its DNA from the other parent and are therefore genetically different from both parents. Yeah, they've got kind of bits and pieces of both parents or a combination of both parents. Um, a quick reminder that when I'm referring to a gamete, uh, I'm referring to any sort of sex cell uh, in animals, that is the egg and the sperm, uh, but in and seed. Okay, so um, you'll hear me throw that around quite often. Um, and just to remember that the plant equivalent of egg and sperm is pollen and seed. Okay, all right, let's take a look at uh, somatic cells and gametes. So um, in humans, there are 46 uh, chromosomes in each cell. Okay, um, and they exist in 23 pairs, uh, 22 identical pairs-ish, uh, and an X and a Y, uh, or an XX, depending on uh, the sex of the organism. Okay, so our cells are either uh, what we call somatic cells. Uh, a somatic cell is any cell that is not a sex cell, that is not a sperm and an egg, and if you haven't uh, sort of figured it out, that is basically all the regular cells in your body are somatic cells. That is, your regular body cells will have 46 chromosomes, okay, 23 pairs, your skin cells, your liver cells, your brain cells, etc. Okay, um, and they have what we call a diploid number, uh, diploid for two, yeah, um, and the shorthand for that is 2n, where n is referring to the number of chromosomes. So 2n equals 2, 46. Now, that n, I'll, I'll explain why in a second. Um, but we say that our somatic cells have a diploid number of chromosomes because they normally have a full set. All right. uh, the chromosomes exist uh, in pairs, which are called homologous pairs. Homologous meaning form, same form. Um, whereas a gamete yeah, um, is a sex cell. So in your body, you will have either the sperm or the egg, and they are a little bit different in that they have a haploid number for singular, uh, where n equals to 23 chromosomes, yeah, 23 single chromosomes. Um, and the, the question is, well, why do sex cells have only half? Um, it is because uh, when two haploid cells join together, they can form a diploid cell. Yeah, you've got half the number um, coming together to form a single um, diploid cell through the process of fertilization, okay? Um, here is a karyotype, uh, which is basically an image graph of the chromosomes in somatic cell. You can see there the 23 pairs or 46 chromosomes. Um, there's the first pair, second pair, third pair. Now, um, and then you get to the 22nd pair and you've got an X and a Y if you're a male or two X's if you are a female. Okay? Now you can see there that the chromosomes largely are very similar in their structure of each pair. That is because you will receive one, this one here perhaps, from one parent and this one here from another parent, okay, which is why you have that genetic diversity. Okay? But they are similar because the gene loci, that is the location of the genes, are very similar for both. It's just that the actual information that the genes contain will differ between those pairs. Okay? If we look at a gamete, the chromosomes will be singular. Yeah, you've only got one singular for the first pair, one singular third, fourth, and then you've got a singular sex 
um, chromosome, which in this case is the X chromosome. We know that because the X chromosome is larger than the Y chromosome. Okay. Now, uh, in sexual reproduction, so in animals, uh, gametes are produced by specialized organs called gonads. Okay, uh, nothing new there. Pretty sure you guys have made jokes about that before. Uh, the female gonads are called the ovaries. Okay, and the female gamete is called the egg or the ovum. Yeah. Now, humans have two ovaries, um, and the ovaries will produce roughly about a million ovum or eggs. Okay. Um, however, of the one million, only five hundred will ovulate or be released in the lifetime um, or the, the sexual um, uh, reproductive period of a female, okay? Now, if you do the maths, that works out to be one every month, which also happens to be approximately the time of a girl's period, right? Um, if uh, up until the point where they sort of ovulate or release all of them, the reproductive uh, decline leads to menopause. Now, menopause is when um, the female no longer is um, able to reproduce sexually because she has basically run out of eggs, yeah? A female was actually born with a set number of eggs uh, already, yeah? So she doesn't produce new ones, they simply are being released from her body the moment that she is born, which is pretty interesting, very different from males, yeah? Uh, males have testes for gonads, and the gamete is the sperm, or otherwise known as the sp spermatozoa, yeah? Um, and humans will have two testes, and Unlike females, which have a set number and only one million in the life, um, lifespan of the female, um, males will produce roughly about 10 million sperm per ejaculation. It's a lot of sperm um, because males have to, uh, well, the sperm have to try and make it into um, the, the female vagina and then uh, get to the egg in order to reproduce. So they do the traveling, which is why many of them will die in that process. So 10 million per ejaculation is roughly the average. Okay. Um, now, there is a decline in sperm count in males as they grow older and, and, and sort of get towards that kind of um, menopause age, but men generally remain fertile throughout their lifetime. Yeah? So the sperm count lowers, which means your probability of uh, fertilizing the egg is less. However, you continue to stay fertile throughout your lifespan until you hit kind of menopause. Okay? Um, now, in ovaries, uh, the cells that give rise to these gametes are actually called germ cells, which means the germ cell is the kind of predecessor of the egg. Yeah? Um, and in females, we call that the oocyte. Yeah? Um, so here is a diagram of the female reproductive system. Yeah? You've got the vagina there, you've got the uterus and the cervix, which is that little kind of narrow opening there. Uh, the fallopian tubes, which extend outwards from the uterus and then reaching to the ovaries, which is where all of the ovums and the eggs are kept. Okay, now that uh, that gap there is sort of where the egg sort of gets released into, it makes its way down, uh, meets the sperm somewhere in the fallopian tube usually, and then it will implant itself on the side of the uterus wall, and then develop into an embryo and a fetus. Okay, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Um, here's just a um, just a um, just an actual picture of what what the kind of reproductive system of a female looks like, um, and here's an image of the um, ovaries releasing that egg. So there is your egg being released from the ovaries. It kind of has to do this kind of jump across the synapse between the ovaries and the fallopian tube and then it starts making its way down the fallopian tube um, during, uh, during that time. Okay. Now in, um, in females right inside the ovaries, so here's a diagram of, uh, sorry not a diagram, this is a um, microscope image of a, an ovary, a cross section of an ovary and you can see there that that there is the developing egg, okay? Um, that developing egg um, was an oocyte, and then the oocyte um, specializes and turns into an egg um, after undergoing uh, meiosis, which is the process that we'll go through in a second. And then it will get released, yeah? Now, that empty kind of sac is called the corpus luteum, and that is what um, the leftovers are after the egg is being ejected. What happens is it slowly shrinks and then it gets kind of reabsorbed back into uh, the ovaries. Yeah, but that there shows you quite nicely what the egg looks like um, as it is um, kind of developing and specializing from the oocyte or the germ cell, yeah, the predecessor. All right, now let's look at testes. So testes um, uh, are, um, will produce the gametes um, are called germ cells. So, sorry, let me say that again. So cells that give rise to gametes are called germ cells. 
And in males, uh, this is called the spermatocyte. So the spermatocyte is the kind of predecessor to the sperm. Yeah? Um, that is the male reproductive organ. Um, you can see their testicle, um, the seminal duct, which is what releases the sperm into, uh, into the scrotum, kind of, um, sorry, from the scrotum area and into the urethra. Um, and males will release both, um, you can see the bladder is connected to the same thing, so males will release both urine and sperm through the same uh, opening, the urethra. Yeah. And inside the testicle, you have um, similar, kind of a similar structure, yeah, a, a spermatocyte which is the kind of predecessor, this spermatocyte will then reproduce through meiosis to form a sperm cell, yeah? So there are your sperm cells um, in their kind of like little um, capsules and then they get released. And then, um, you know, you kind of have these linings of each of these rows um, and the vas deferens, which is that line that connects um, the, the testicles to um, the seminal duct, yeah? That is where the sperm will then travel through, yeah? And, um, yeah, and so that, that is where uh, it sort of moves through. Um, and usually when uh, males, like particularly fathers who, who sort of had children and are looking to cut and tie their tube, this is what they are cutting and tying, the vas deferens that is here. And then that's the cut and tie, okay? Um, all right. <clears throat> Here's another diagram, that's what actually sperm looks like. Uh, sperm are actually quite remarkable cells. Uh, there's the kind of the sperm head. It basically is just a little capsule that carries the DNA of the male. And then it's got this ridiculously long tail, yeah? Um, this really long flagella, uh, or a flagella-like structure, I would say. Um, but that tail uh, does this kind of whipping motion. And you can see the really long tail allows the sperm to actually move about 50 times its length. Uh, in one beat or one kind of uh, whip, yeah? And so the sperm travel ridiculously fast for their size and they travel in vast numbers. And they have to because uh, the journey of a sperm is actually quite a, a dangerous one, right? Um, here's the sperm after it reaches the, uh, the egg. The first one to get there will then crack open the, the egg and then inject its DNA into the egg. Um, and then all the others will kind of try and catch up to that. But the first one gets accepted and then all the others uh, gets rejected, right? Now, um, I want to go over the process of meiosis very briefly, and then what we're going to do is uh, we'll look at it in the next video, okay? So, um, the production of gametes is the process of meiosis, yeah? It's different from mitosis. Mitosis was the division of the nucleus, yeah? Uh, meiosis is the process where um, organisms produce sex cells. They produce gametes with a haploid number of DNA, uh, or chromosomes, I would say, um, and that's the process of meiosis, yeah? So in males, the meiosis occurs in the germ cells that produce the spermatocyte, okay? And in females, meiosis occurs in the germ cells that produce the egg, yeah, or the oocyte, right? Um, and so the process of producing a baby kind of looks like this, yeah? Um, inside the testicles, uh, the spermatocyte, Meiosis will occur, and what it does is it produces sperm that only have half the amount of DNA. In females, uh, inside the ovaries, meiosis will occur to produce half um, the amount of DNA in an egg, uh, which then will combine together with the sperm and fertilize to form a zygote, which will have 46 again. And as you can see there, um, through mitosis, that zygote would then develop on to become a fetus and embryo, okay? And you can see there, the haploid stage is that stage where the egg and the sperm is formed, and the diploid stage is when you get a full uh, cell once again, okay? Um, <clears throat> it is not the opposite of mitosis. As I said, in meiosis, um, one parent uh, cell divides twice to form four daughter cells, and I'll explain how that sort of happens uh, later on. And each daughter cell will have half the number of chromosomes, okay? Um, so meiosis will then produce gametes and sex cells. Now, this is kind of like the overview of my meiosis. And if you, uh, when we look into it in more detail, you'll understand that it looks particularly similar to mitosis for the first half, and then it kind of makes it look a little bit more different, okay? But you can see there, um, the same kind of diagram that you've been seeing, um, same kind of division of uh, similar to mitosis, working its way down, breaking in half, and then breaking in half again to form four daughter cells as opposed to two daughter cells, okay? Um, all right, so we'll, we'll cut it there. Um, and then we'll ne uh, next video, we're going to actually look um, specifically at the different phases of meiosis, okay? See you guys.